Shabbat Shalom. We begin our service. We begin with the parasha overview. And today we have uh, two parashot, uh, parashim, uh, Vayachel and Pekudeh. Torah portion comes to us from Exodus 35 through 40. Torah portion begins with Moses assembling the people of Israel to communicate the instructions of building the tabernacle of the Lord. Moshe first reminds the Israelites concerning the Sabbath regulations and then asks for all those Israelites who feel compelled to bring an offering to the Lord of the materials needed for the construction of the tabernacle. In a flood of willing hearts, the people brought all materials needed and then some. Moshe had to tell the people to stop bringing materials for they had enough. Then he calls for all the gifted artisans to come forward to make the furnishings that would be placed within the tabernacle. The, Pet the Pekode uh, Torah portion focuses on the making of the priestly garments, ephod, breastplate, and other priestly garments that were needed uh, for the priests to complete their responsibilities. To the Torah portion ends with the tabernacle being completed. And on the first day of the month, the Lord commanded Moshe to raise the tabernacle to the Lord. Moshe did all that the Lord had commanded, and the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The Haftarah portion comes to us from 1 Kings uh, chapter 7, 13 through 26. Haftarah this week began with Solomon sending for Haram because he was a skilled bronze worker. Haram came from Tyre to do all the bronze work for Solomon as he sought to construct the temple of the Lord. Haram proceeded to make bronze pillars within the temple, the Haftarah, por the Haftarah portion, ends by discussing the sea, which is a basin that could hold approximately 17,000 gallons of water. Also, Haram constructed 12 bronze oxen for the sea to rest upon. The Brit Kalasha portion comes to us from Hebrews uh, chapter 9, uh, verses 1 and 11. Then verily the first covenant that al had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. This week's parasha discussed and detailed the construction of the furnishings that were placed in both the tabernacle and the temple, respectively. Specifically, we read in Shemot concerning the Israelites' uh, willing heart to bring and donate materials to Moshe to aid in the construction of the tabernacle. So much so, he had to tell them to not bring any more likewise, we as believers in Yeshua, the tabernacle not made with hands must come to his throne with willing hearts, seeking to donate ourselves to his will and to be used in any way he should so please. The Shabbat Tehillim comes to us from Psalms chapter 61. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower for my enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, Selah. For thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Amen. Shofar aim. Praise you, holy, holy, holy God. Heavenly Father, we have prepared our hearts to come before you this morning. We desire for your presence to be in this place this morning. For you to be glorified and honored. Open our eyes, Father, to see you. Open our ears to hear you. Prepare us, Father. Prepare us for the word. 
that we might not miss anything that you have to say to us this morning. We want to worship you. We want to glorify you. We desire, Father, for your presence to bring forth healing and words, Father, in our hearts, Father, to encourage us. I pray for every person here this morning. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch every heart, every mind. You know exactly what each person needs, and I pray, Father, this morning that their needs would be met. It's not physical in this world, Lord, that we need. It's What we need is a transformation of our hearts, Lord. We desire you. We want to be aware of you always, Lord. So this morning, as the word comes forth, feed us. Feed us from heaven, Lord. Father, we're going to worship you this morning with holy hands lifted up. We're going to sing to you from our hearts, Lord, because you deserve it. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you with all of our hearts. Be glorified in this service this morning. Anoint the word that comes forth, and we will give you all the praise. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen, amen. Let us stand together. For how lovely the tents of Jacob and the dwelling places of Israel. Matovi. shall draw water from the wells of Yeshua. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. We begin the Siddur with Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorak, Baruch Adonai Hamvorak Le'olam Va'ed. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. V'shamru v'nei Yisrael. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. The blessing of Mashiach together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu, ederek ha-Yeshua, b'mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Please stand for the Shema. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch 
Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Uvelektakav Derek, Ushakbakov Kumakam, Ukshar Tam Liltai Daka, Vahayu, Leturo Benanaka, Hukdav Tam Zut Betaka, Uvisharakam. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way. When you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Ha'amida, blessed are you, Lord our God and God of our fathers, God of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God, who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Abraham. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the resurrector of the dead are you, abundantly able to save, who sustains and lives with kindness, resurrected out with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death, restores life, and makes salvation sprout? Amen. Eloheinu, Eloheinu, ve'elhe avutenu. Our God and God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest, Sanctify us in your commandments, and grant us our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness, and make us rejoice in your salvation. And, purif and purify our hearts to serve you in truth, in love and favor, O Lord our God. Grant us your holy Shabbat's heritage, and may Yisrael sanctify us in your name, rest therein. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh Shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes the Shabbat holy. Kaddish, magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and all say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations, which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. May you make peace in his high places, make peace upon us and upon all Yisrael, and say, Amen. Amen. 
Yitzbarak, Vishtabak, Vitzbarak, Trumam, Vietna save to Darv to Lev to Lel, Shmedakushab the Hu, La Elim Koprakat, the Vishrat, the Tushpakat, Venekimata, the Ram Bama Vimru, Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, say shalom bim ramah. Ooh, say shalom aleinu. Ve'acho Yisrael. Vimru, imru, amen. Oh, say shalom bimramav. Who we are, say shalom aleinu. Ve'acho Yisrael. Vimru, imru. Yaseh Shalom, Yaseh Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael. Yaseh Shalom, Yaseh Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael. Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael. May he who makes peace in high places make peace for Israel and for all mankind, and say, Amen. Oh. 
train of his robe fills the temple, and we cry out, high as praise. Glory to the risen King, glory to the Son, glorious Son. Lift up your hands, open
We're here because we heard your spirit's call. Now the curtain has been torn. As we worship, we are free.
worship you today and give you all honor and glory and praise there's none like you in heaven and earth for you are awesome and powerful and righteous and you set up and you bring down and you create and you order up our steps Lord God and we follow you Lord in your light we ask Lord God that you would shine brightly upon us Lord that we would receive your light that we would reflect it, Lord, to the world around us. We glorify you, we praise you, and we honor you for this Shabbat. May our eyes be open and our ears open to hear and see all that you have. Yeshua's name, amen. would travel, Moshe would say, Arise, Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Let them that hate you flee from you. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Yerushalayim. Blessed be he when his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Ya'amod Yoav ben Ariel la Torah. Baruchet Adonai Hambarach, Baruch Adonai Hambarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher b'char b'nu mikol ha'amim v'natan lano et Torah to Baruch atah Adonai, notain ha'torah. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all people and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Yeladi. Yeladim, the children of Rosh Pina up front, and we pray a weekly blessing over them. But first we say, Boker Tov Yeladim. Let us pray. We thank you, O Lord, for these blessed children and the families that they represent. May they be blessed abundantly as Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Lord, I ask that a hedge of protection be around each and one of these children, O Lord that you would keep them safe from harm's way and that you would keep them healthy with the sickness that's around about us, O oh Lord, and you would keep them safe. Lord, I ask that, Lord, as they grow physically, that spiritually they would be drawn to you, Yeshua, realizing who you are, our Messiah, who came and is coming again. 
Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for them. They're such a blessing to us. Surround them, Lord, with godly men and women who will assist them during their life's journey through this world until you return. They're such blessings to us, O Lord. We thank you for them, O Lord, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. ויקחל משה את כל עדת בני ישראל ויאמר אליהם אלה הדברים אשר ציווה יחובה לעשות אותם ששת ימים תעשה מלכה וביום השביעי יחיה לכם קודש שבת שבתון לחווה כל העושה בו מלכה יומת לא תאבו אש בכל משבתכם ביום השבת. And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher natan lanu Torah emet, v'chai olam natan letochenu, Baruch atah Adonai, notein ha-Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth, has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. וזאת התורה אשר שם משה לפני בני ישראל על פי אדוני ביד משה. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1.1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. This Torah scroll is the Word of God, Yeshua is this Word. John the Immerser said in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of all the world. God's Word is written on lambskin, Yeshua is this Lamb. John 12, 32, Yeshua said, And I, if I'm lifted from the earth, I'll draw all people to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Amen. Eitz Chaim, he, l'machazakim ba, v'tumcha amushar, v'achei doakeno am, v'kol netzapatecha shalom, eshevveinu donai elecha, v'neshevachadesh, yemenu kakadem. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. Happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, and we shall return. Renew our days as of old. Revelation 2.7 reads, You as an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregations. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeshua was, he is, and shall ever be, this word of the one living God, that we look upon this day for our salvation. Amen. You may be seated. How many ready to study the word this morning? Amen. This week, this Shabbat's a parashot, meaning that there's two parts to it. Uh, the part that I'm going to focus in on is... He assembled, which is the first portion of it. And uh, my teaching is going to come from these following verses that are in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 4, will be the, um, the context of the message for this morning. And these verses read as follows. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service 
and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. Today, I'll show you what these four verses consist of and why it's important to study Habrit Kadashah or the New Testament within the context of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, to gain and to expand your understanding as it was expressed by the writer of the book of Hebrews. Now we just read that it's mentioned that there's a worldly sanctuary. So where does this worldly sanctuary that we just read about, where in the, in the book of Hebrews, where did it come from? Well, let's look at some verses. First, we'll start with Shemot, Exodus 25, verses 8 through 9 and 40 and then Exodus 26, verse 30. Then we'll jump into the Habrit Kadashah, and we'll read Acts 7, 44, and Hebrews 8, 5, which says the following. And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. And thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, which was showed thee in the mount. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for, see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So as you study the, the Habrit Karashah, the, the New Testament, you really need to understand exactly what's it's being said. And the only way to do that is to go back into the Tanakh, the Old Testament, r review the references that are mentioned, and study them so you can get the complete benefit of reading the New Testament. So we know now why the verse says a worldly sanctuary, because it was here and it was destined to perish. It was only intended to be temporary. Now the ark appears in the tabernacle and in the first temple, but we don't hear of its presence in the second temple. Second Chronicles 35 verse three says this. And said unto the Levites that taught all Israel, which were holy unto the Lord, put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now the Lord your God and his people, Israel. Now it is taught that the reference here is a secret vault in the temple for in cases of emergencies. It's important to understand this containment that happens in cases of emergency, especially as we get further into the teaching. So keep that in, in mind, uh, flag it in your, in your uh, notes or just try to remember it. If you forget it, I'm gonna remind you. And the ark was placed there because of the prophecy that Hilkiah spoke in 2 Chronicles 34, verse 20 through, through 25, which says this. And Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvat, the son of Hasra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. And they spake to her to that effect, and she answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell me the man that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book which they had read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. Now we can see why it was gone. Hebrews 9, 8 through 9 says this. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not made yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, 
which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to conscience. God's place of dwelling was now gone in preparation, I believe, for God to dwell among his people as Yeshua in the first century. But the tabernacle and the temple still exists, and many look for the ark even today. We see instances even back in the 80s where they said it was discovered under, under uh, Golgotha. And then we see other examples where it may be in, in Ethiopia. And so we see people constantly looking for it. So do you want to really know where it is? I can show you. But you have to join me in the journey. So how many of you want to come? Okay, so n none of you want to come? Okay, all right, all right. Revelation 11:19 says the following. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. It has future significance, the ark. It is revealed at the seventh trumpet. And it is maintained in its spiritual uh, existence where the physical ark has served its purpose. So now we read in Hebrews that the ark on earth contained a golden pot of manna, which was heavenly food, coming down from heaven to feed B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness. There was Aaron's rod that budded, and then there were the tablets of the covenant. So you should ask yourself this question as you read these, study these verses. Now that you've read it in the Tanakh, and now you've read it in the Chabrij Kadashah, you need to read, okay, well, why were these items in the ark? Why were they in the ark? How many have asked that question? How many thought about that? Don't lie on Shabbat. Well, let's look at some scripture. The first item, manna. Shemot 16, 31 through 34 says this. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness. When I brought you forth from the land of Egypt, and Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord, to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. So that's the reason the first item's there. The reason is to be kept for their generations as a reminder, a remembrance. Davarim, Deuteronomy 4, 8, 2 through 3 says this, and thou shalt remember all the way which well, the Lord... Let me stop a second. Remember, the book of Deuteronomy was written by who? Moshe as what? Instruction for what? The people when? Right before he died. Commulation of everything that seemed to be important to him as he was leaving this life to pass on his instruction to B'nai Israel, which is culmination of everything that he learned and a culmination of the first four books of the Torah. Continue on. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. This is the bread that God fed the B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, in the wilderness when God brought them forth from out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of Egypt. Manna, to remember that he was their sustenance. Now let's look at the second item. Aaron's rod, Aharon, in the ark. Bamibar, Numbers 17, 1 through 10, says the following. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod, and thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers, and thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony, wherein I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom. And I will, make, I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against me. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece, for each prince one according to their father's houses, even twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto the, all the children of Israel, and they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony, to be kept for a token against the rebels, and thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me, they that they die not. So, Aharon's rod, representing his family, representing his authority, representing the fact that he was chosen by God. This was to demonstrate to B'nai Israel, the children of God, that Aharon, Aaron, was selected by God right after the Korah rebel rebellion. Remember Korah? Remember the rebellion? To cease the murmuring of the children of Israel. It talks about blooming. It talks about blossoming. It talks about yielding almonds. These all have significant prophetic uh, meanings. First, to bloom, but the last, to bear fruit. That's what an almond tree is. It blooms first in Israel, but it bears fruit last. Also, it had magical properties, and they were associated with Aharon's rod. Shemot 7, 11, and 12 says this. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Because of this miracle, awaits botanical properties, it became a symbol of divine prophecy and defines prophecy nicely. Prophecy, once again, comes forth. It comes forth first, and then it takes a while after all everything happens for prophecy to be fulfilled, and then it has to be explained. It has to be harvested after it's been fulfilled, and it comes in last, so the fruit comes forth after the prophecy's been fill, fulfilled, occurs, explains, and comes forth. Aharon's rod was kept as a token against the rebels and was to be a reminder of the children of Israel of what happened. Now let's look at the third item in the form of the tablets. The first two were remembrances. And you're going to see that they disappear. And we'll talk about why. But there were remembrances. Let's talk about the third item. Kept in the ark. The tablets. Turn to Shemot, Exodus 25, 16 and 21. Shemot 40, 17 through 20. Davarim, Deuteronomy 10, 1 through 5. And Shemot 34, verse 1. Which we'll put in between Shemot 25 and Shemot 40. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone, like, one, like unto the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. And then, and then it came to pass in the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacles reared up, and Moses reared up the tabernacle and fastened 
his sockets, and set up the boards thereof, and put in the bars thereof, and reared up his pillars. And he spread abroad the tents over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tents above, uh, above upon it, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he took and put the testimony into the ark, and set the staves on the ark, and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew these two tables of stone like unto the first, and come up unto me in the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. And I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in my hand. And he wrote on the tables according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount, out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me, and I in turn myself came down from the mount and put the tables in the ark which I had made, and there they be as the Lord commanded me. So why were the tablets there? Davarim 31, 24 through 27 says this. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, you have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. So, now, how many saw where somebody made Ten Commandments up just recently and had some ritual that happened in Israel where a bunch of religious leaders came together and this new Ten Commandments are uh, in the form of uh, environmental to save Mother Earth and, and came up with these ten new commandments. How many have seen, how many saw that? Okay. How many didn't see it? Good. You don't have to ask for a renewing of your mind because it's such blasphemous events that are occurring in these last days. Unbelievable. Go ahead. You done? So let's move on to the first temple of Solomon's time. 1 Kings 8, 1, 4, 9, and 21, along with 2 Chronicles 5, 10, and 6, 11, which says the following. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem, that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is in Zion. And they brought up the ark of the Lord and the tabernacle of the congregation and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. Even those did the priest and the Levites bring up. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone. Repeat that. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone. The memorial disappeared in Solomon's temple. Those first two memorials disappeared. Go ahead. Which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out of the land of Egypt. And I have set there a place for the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, which he made with our fathers, when he brought them out of the land of Egypt. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables, which Moses put therein at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt. And, it ha and in it have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, that he made with the children of Israel. Now only the two tablets were present. Where was the manna? Gone. Why? Well, I believe it had to go because of what was to come. The book of John, chapter 6, verses 4 through 48 through 51 says this. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the Lord, the world. This transition was to occur going from the physical, which was temporary, into the uh, spiritual, which is eternal. And what about Aharon's rod? Gone. Why? Because of what was to come. Second Peter 1, 20 through 21 says this. 
Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So manna was an example of Yeshua, and Aharon's was an example of prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13 says this. But ye, he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Well, what about the book of Davarim? Was it found in the ark? Davarim 31.26 says this. Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the in covenant. In the side of the ark. Got that? Remember what happened in Ezra and Nehemiah's time? They discovered it where? Close to the altar, right? And they read it and it convicted them, right? It's put on the side of the ark. Go ahead. Of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. It's there as a witness. It's a physical thing that had to be there, still contained, in order to remind what was to come. Only God's instruction went into the ark. Here, Moshe instructed in Davarim, Deuteronomy, and did his instruction work? The answer is yes, because we saw later on of what I just mentioned. Uh, 2 Kings 22, 8 through 13 says this. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. Did he find it. it in the ark? It's a quiz. Did he find it in the ark? Where was it? Yep. It's in the house of the Lord, right? Wasn't in the ark. Go ahead. Let's and, continue. And Shaphan the scribe... Aren't you glad you read those verses before you read this verse? <laughs> Go ahead. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Haikam the son of Shaphan, and Akbor the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asahiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. This all occurred in Josiah's day. So now, why did the tablet stay in the ark? I, be, I believe because it is what they represented. God and Yeshua's words. Isaiah 40, 6 and 8 says this, 6 through 8 says this. The voice said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. It's the word of God, the, the tablets, the commandments, they weren't something that were intended to be a remembrance. They were intended to be something that's there because the word of God lives forever. Matthew 5, 17 through 18 says this. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise Pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Not one jot or tittle. Both the broken tablets and the completed tablets in the ark. What's the significance? We'll visit that in a few moments. First Peter 1, 23-25 says this. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. How many has heard that verse before? Continue on. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Enduring forever. The word of God is eternal. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness. Confirms that nothing has changed since Moshe's instructions in Davarim 31, verse 26. They're still the same. Now the ark of the earth has perished in its purpose of a shadow of things to come through Yeshua. But the importance of these items live on in the generations and for those to come until he returns. Manna, no longer remembrance. Manna is Yeshua, our bread of life. Aharon's rod, the authority rod of royalty, the comforter who as Yeshua, who is Yeshua and God's word, who is Yeshua who because who became, who is Yeshua, who became flesh to be etched upon our hearts as believers. John 1, 14 says this. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And today the ark on earth now dwells in us as we are now God's fleshly tabernacles. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18, and 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 9 says the following. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earth earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. His manna is Yeshua, that is in us and feeds our spirits. His rod is the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, and his word is in us, and is to be etched upon the two tablets of our hearts on the inside and it's significant because much like the ark being put the ark being put away it is on the inside for us it's hidden inside for emergencies and for instruction on our lives and becomes more important as we live in these end days the importance of what is hidden in our hearts the tablets that are hidden in our hearts the tablets that were broken, the tablets that break us. And then the tablets that are in our hearts, the tablets that make us again. Now let's read Revelation eleven nineteen again. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunders thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Okay, now we're done talking about the physical ark and now we transition to the ark that is in heaven that was there which was a sh which was what was instructed to Moshe to create a shadow an example of what was in heaven. That's been now served its purpose and has transitioned and now let's look at what's actually in heaven which is still in heaven even today and will have end time significance as we read in the book of Revelation. And we ask, so what is, next question, we know what was in the ark in the world, now let's see what was in the ark, what is in the ark that is in heaven? The answer is found in Hebrews 9, 11 through 15, which says this. 
but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now, how many have seen, a, uh, how many have heard about the five red heifers that came out of Texas and now are residing in Israel? How many have heard of that? How many know what the significance of those red heifers were? They're used to purify the priests and they purify other things. Now, these red heifers have to stay pure until I think the age of five. Guess what year they become age five? 2024. There's plans to sacrifice these, whichever ones that are pure, around either Pesach or, or Shavuot um, in 2024. Land's been uh, established. It looks over out of the Mount of Olives. It looks over where the temple used to reside. All of this is prophecy being walked out physically. However, remember what happened. We have the ark that's in heaven, and now there's a preparation time for what's going to happen on the earth. We don't know what that's going to mean or what it's going to say, but they're progressing. Remember, we talk about Aaron's rod, how it blooms forth, and then it takes a while before the fruit to come. There's a lot of prophetic things happening in our midst that only God could have his hand on. Those five red heifers... Up till, up till Maimonides' time, there was nine red heifers. He says Maimonides, um, who's a, a rabbinic sage, said that there were, nine, there were nine red heifers that were used uh, from the time of the tabernacle all the way up through the destruction in 70 AD of the, of the last second temple. And how many know there's supposed to be a third temple? Right? Okay. Maimonides said that the Mashiach would sacrifice the tenth red heifer to purify those things that were to come. Ponder that. Now, how many think that's going to be the Mashiach? How many don't know? How many is going to watch that and observe it? A lot of things are happening during these days. A lot of things are going on that we're experiencing. Now give me about a half hour to figure out where I was. <laughs> His testament for us is in the tabernacle, is in the ark that is in heaven. Revelation 19.10 says this. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You hear that? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. How many know what the testimony of Jesus is? It's the Gospels, right? Testimony of Jesus, and it is the spirit of prophecy. Of what has been fulfilled, what is to be fulfilled, and how we find our salvation. When you accept Yeshua, you have eaten his manna. What's his manna? You've eaten his flesh. He said it. You've eaten his flesh. Now, are we Catholic? Because they believe, I don't know, Stephen, I have to answer this, but they believe that when you take the, 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 uh, when you take the uh, communion, it converts to flesh. That's Yeshua's flesh. However, if they would read a little further in the verses where Yeshua says, if you, you have to follow me, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood, and everyone went schizo when they heard that because they're not cannibals and they're not required to drink blood, it's a, it's a violation of Torah, they, they wanted explanation. And what did Yeshua say to his Talmudim, his 
disciples. What did he say? This is spiritual, it's not physical, but he got the impact to them for them to think about what physical is and what spiritual is. When you accept Yeshua, you have eaten his manna, you have eaten his flesh. And when you invite his Ruach HaKodesh, you have to invite his Ruach HaKodesh to dwell in you, you drink his blood. You move in this authority and you get this by asking. Moving in his authority. Why drink his blood? Because life is in the flesh. The life is in the blood. Luke 11, 9 through 23 says this. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he a shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So in closing, as the ones of his tabernacle on earth that believe in him, where his presence dwells just as it did in the book of Acts on Shavuot, day of Pentecost, and the book Acts chapter 10 in Cornelius' house when the Ruach HaKodesh was poured out upon both the Jews and, and the Gentiles. For those who were there and who followed after up until this day and until he returns, when you are armed with his complete word and his spirit, you are equipped to do his service in these end days as his royal priesthood. People, accept your calling and do as he asks you to do for those that believe. For those that don't believe in Yeshua, time is of the essence. You need to accept Yeshua, Jesus as your savior. Time is running short. He's returning very soon. All the signs and everything is, is prevalent. You need the birth pains we're in. You need to get your lives right with God for those that are listening to this message. And you need to accept him as your Messiah and repent for your sins. And let me leave you with this question to consider. Consider it today. Consider it when, it, when you remember this. If Yeshua was coming for you tomorrow, what would you do differently today? Amen. It is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation, for he's made us unlike the nations of the lands and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He's not made our portion like theirs and our lot like their multitudes, and we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king over kings, the holy one blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation and the seat of his glory is in the heavens above and the presence of his powers in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our king, there is nothing beside him as it is written in his Torah. And you shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below, there is none other. Amen. Amen, amen. Let us stand together. This is my 
rise upon the waves when the oceans rise our souls will rest in your presence we are yours Lord you are we worship you your presence
Pray for refreshing in this place. Waters rise, waters fall in this place. We've come here. About you to your name, O oh Lord, we come. Fire fall. Oh, we honor you. We Pour out our praise to you. Oh, we need you. Desperate for you to move on us. To soak up these dry lands. Soak up the dry lands, pour out, Lord. You are the life, you are the life we hold on to. Oh, we'll bow. Fire come down, soak up this ground. Come on us, Lord. Mm. 
Thank you for your presence. How you feed us, Lord, how you perform miracles in our lives, and how you guide and direct us, Lord. Like the manna, you feed, Lord, your people. Aaron's rod shows you perform miracles. tablets of your word direct and guide us Lord you walk in the spirit Lord and in the light we ask Lord God that you would give us confidence and boldness in our spirit to step into what you have called Lord each and every one of us to the flesh would die the spirit would rise up this eternal battle which we fight, Father God, we would be blessed, confident where you've called us. We honor you, we praise you, and we thank you for all that you're doing, for what you've done, what you're about to do. Shem Yeshua Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance to give you his shalom. Shabbat shalom, 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 shalom. Praise the peace of Jerusalem. Even come quickly, Lord Yeshua. Amen and amen. Please be seated for a couple of announcements. <clears throat> Uh, as we've been announcing in the last several weeks on the back table, we have sign-ups for uh, Passover. Uh, so please sign uh, your family up. Uh, and then if there are um, any guests that you were thinking about bringing, please, you know, you can sign them up and put a star by them because we want to make sure we have enough room for um, our congregants first, and then we'll go forward from there. Also, there's a sign-up list for uh, if anybody would like to help, whether it's a set up, tear down all the tables and chairs, or uh, making some of the items on the Seder plates. Uh, we do have the washcloths in the back as well. I believe uh, they're probably going to be um, done with those next week. So please, um, if you'd like to purchase one, again, all the funds uh, and donations go to the children's ministry. And then also on the back table there, uh, we have mo uh, still have a lot of bags. So please take those with you to hand them out um, in your daily lives in the public, uh, public for those who are in need. Uh, and then lastly, this Wednesday, uh, we have Yeshiva 7.30 to 9. We are covering chapter 32 uh, in the book of um, uh, refuting uh, rabbinic objections. Also, what I wanted to mention as it relates to the uh, Passover Seder, uh, the prices for adults are going to be $24, and the kids are going to be $12. Okay? So price is 24 kids 12 you, Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Oh, go ahead. Because Passover is April 5th, which is a Wednesday night. Uh, it's going to begin around 6.30. Okay? And what's that? history of who 
Yeshua was and his culture and try to learn Yeshua from a cultural perspective. So I went last week, last Sunday to their um, church and gave a little talk to their, to their congregation class. There's there like 15 kids that are young. It's kind of like our bar fun next door. And uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a good class. The kids are actually pretty sharp biblically. They know what they're they know the New Testament, let's put it that way. They don't really know their Old Testament. Uh, but they're coming next week here, so on Shabbat. And I'd like to kind of, you know, make sure we give the, the people a warm welcome. The youth pastor is going to be here, and, uh, you know, a couple of people that I know personally. So, um, Omeg, let's maybe have some extra Omeg. I think there might be like. 15 to 20 people coming ish. So it should be a nice, a nice uh, experience for them. Hopefully it will be our difference uh, than the United Methodist Church. So it's going to be an interesting you know, event for them, but at the same time, um, you know, kind of seeing the culture of Yeshua and having the combination of the Hebrew and the English. And, uh, I think it will be a good one. So when you see them, Kind of give them a warm <coughs> Let's maybe think about them because we're going to have an extra crowd here. That's it. All right. How's it going, Oneg? Let's say the bracha together. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMutzi Lecha Min HaRetz BaHashem Yeshu HaMashiach Amen. Shavuot Tov. Actually, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. Alistair has an announcement. Alistair, you want to come up? I apologize about that. There you go. Next week is the last week. You have to stand over here. Stand right here. You know, look at him. And of course, before you even need to look at all these people, are they going to bite you? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. How many want to hear what Alistair has to say? <laughs> Look at that, huh? Next week is the last week to bring in donations for my bar mitzvah project. I'm collecting laundry detergent and dish soap to donate to the Lodi Family Center. Thank you. All right, awesome. All right, Shavuot Tov.